again, I am Tapia Nisosia, and as always, boy, do we have some news for you. So without further ado, <laughs> how about some news? Now, have you ever found yourself saying, if this is how it all ends, what does it all matter? Why should I plan for the future if all of this is going to burn? Ah, store up your treasure in heaven, they've said. And I've heard this verse being used in all sorts of contexts. But what does it all actually mean? Hmm? With all these questions, I would like to take a moment and applaud the Zimbabwe West Union Conference Treasury Department for the initiative that they took in helping church members to not only understand the financial processes of the organization, but to also become more financially literate in other areas of their life. More from our correspondent, Unique Zimuto. Take it away, Unique. The Zimbabwe West Union Conference is on a mission to help educate the church about treasury processes within the church through a monthly live cast. Recently, on their Hour with Treasury, panelists had some interesting thoughts on Adventism, generational wealth, and the future. Unique Zimoto, GNN, Zimbabwe. And especially Adventists are adverse in planning their future. This week again, I learned of somebody who said, I'm not saving for a pension plan because Jesus will come before then. I'm not having life insurance. Jesus will come. Now, this is actually at the heart of the issue at stake. Okay, you see, this is something I can stand behind because I feel a lot of us view money as evil instead of the love of money being evil. Yes, we should store up our treasure in heaven, but it doesn't say only store up our treasure in heaven, now does it? In fact, that kind of mentality is like saying, okay, since I'm going to order pizza next week, I like pizza, I don't need to eat until then. And if I eat the food that's prepared for me within the week, well, then I'm just a glutton. Now it sounds silly, doesn't it? But so is the mentality that since Christ is coming, I don't have to, finance, to be financially responsible. In fact, if you want to know the extent of the silliness of this mentality, take a look at the reaction of the gentleman in the video. Yes, he did this. This is the international sign for what? So kudos to the Zimbabwe West Union Conference Treasury Department for this initiative. Miracles, do they still happen or are they a thing of the past? If you are one of the people who are believing that miracles are reserved for Bible times and Bible characters, then our next story is for you. Meet Rose, a lady in Angola who experienced a post-operation complication that led her to being bedridden for months on end. When the doctors could no longer help her, well, Rose was discharged to meet her fate at home. Pretty bleak, huh? Rose, she was admitted in the hospital. He went through three operations, but it was not successful. She was in the hospital like six months. She was told to go back home because there was no solution for her sickness. When she arrived there at home, some churches, they came for pray for her. And she told those leaders that she doesn't need the prayer of another church. The only prayer that she want to listen before she die should be the prayer of a pastor. They came to my house to tell me about the situation and we went there to the village called Sandambanji. And there we found Rosa. The smelling of the room was too bad. We did three prayers there. After that, I went to the church. I proclaimed a fasting day for Rose. Later on, we went there to visit Rose. Rosa was walking. Rosa was talking. Rosa, she did not heal. 
because my prayer. But Rosa was willing because of her faith in Jesus Christ. I believe if us, we have a faith like Rosa, many of us, we should be healing for our sickness. You know, it's stories like this that get me excited. They get me excited because we are bombarded by so many tragedies in the world and we often find ourselves questioning the power of God. We hear things like, where is God when all of this is happening? Or the very famous, if God exists, how come bad things are happening? And it's stories like this, stories like Rose's story, that show us the awesome power of God in a world that needs hope. A power that cannot be explained by physicians because they had given up on her and sent her home. A power so great that it can only be described as one thing and one thing only. A miracle. Today, Rose is a living testimony that when we believe, miracles do exist. Now, if you watched GNN a couple weeks ago, you would know that I am super excited about the Bible trivia game, Heroes. Yes, if you missed that episode, the link will be provided in the description box below. Now, in that episode, I spoke to Pastor Sam Nevis, who told me about the Heroes tournament that was going to happen. Now, these tournaments, they took place over this past weekend. Oh, yeah! Now over to our sports correspondent, Sir Taps Tappington, for more. Taps, well, it's wonderful to be here to be with, and if I may just quickly add, I am a huge fan of your work. I mean, a huge, huge fan. <laughs> Thank you very much, Taps, and if I may say so myself, you're quite the looker. I mean, so good looking. Mm. <laughs> well, thank you. All right, uh, now, before I get lost in your big, beautiful, humble eyes, Taps, <laughs> let's get to the reason why we are here. Mm. The Heroes Tournament. Oh, yeah, I'm excited. Well, well, yes, listen, there was so much excitement that happened this week as the Heroes Tournament were underway. Now, as you so brilliantly reported a few weeks back, the winner of the tournament, they were going to win an all-expense-paid trip to Jerusalem. Now, here is what happened. The first Euro World Champion was one of the great events of the Global Camp Meeting. Players around the world represented the country for qualification round to final. One of the SIT representatives was Elian, who represented Madagascar, got his qualification up to the semi final. Uh, I wasn't going to play in the beginning, but uh, my little sister wanted to play. But uh, unfortunately, when we went to the official site, they, they said among the rules that it was only for 18 years old and above. And my little sister is 13, so she was sad that she couldn't participate. So I decided to do it in her place. And then during the first round that I played, they actually said that it was possible for people under 18 to play. So uh, I asked her to, if she would want to play with me for the second round and uh, she agreed and we played together. For the second qualification that I participated in, the number eight, it was actually a little bit more difficult because uh, it was at 4 a.m. So I had to wake up very early to not miss it. And uh, I practiced uh, until late in the night but uh, I still uh, managed to wake up in time. But it was fun and uh, I had fun interacting with all these people and playing the game. And even though I was a lot nervous, uh, I actually enjoyed it a lot. Um, personally, I think this game is very interesting because uh, normally young people, they don't like to read long stuff, but they like to have some challenges and uh, with the, within the game there is like a time limit and there are effects and uh, just the fact that it's in the form of a game it uh, encourages young people to learn more about the bible and uh, 
they have fun with it. And it's also a very effective way for them to show their, to their friends, to evangelize. And uh, as it is also a collaboration with Hope Channel, it's uh, actually a very good way to direct our friends, to direct ourselves even, to, to watch, to, to connect with Hope Channel, which is uh, actually a big blessing for our young people. so much taps and if you haven't downloaded the app okay go on right ahead and check the links in the description below and you will be well on your way to having fun while learning about Bible heroes well done and congrats to alien who represented SID coming from Madagascar and made it all the way to the semifinals and also, congratulations to our hero's world champion, Ian CG. Okay, now I have one question for you, sir. Because I remember as you spoke to Pastor Sam Nevis, you said that you were gonna join the Bible Heroes Tournament. Now, how far did you get? <laughs> sir Tappington, you know what? You're such a brilliant sports correspondent. <laughs> how about we stick to that instead of asking all these difficult questions? Oh, uh, well, okay. Under understandable. I didn't get far. Coming up next is our guest, and today we have a doozy for you because our guest is coming all the way from the Southern Africa Indian Ocean Division where he serves as the SID Communications Department Director as well as the Director for SID Media. Please give a warm welcome for Elder... No Sibanda. <laughs> Mr. Sibanda, welcome to GNN. Thank you so much, Shapiro, and thank you so much for having me. No problem, only a pleasure. Now, congratulations are in order as we heard that you have been re-elected as the uh, SID Communications Department Director. So, congratulations. We praise God, Tapiwa. Thank you so much. By His grace, <laughs> we thank God. Now, 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 just to just jump right into it. Um, a lot of things these past, like, year and a half, two years have been revolving around the pandemic, COVID-19. Now, it's been something that has affected a lot of people. Now, what are some, and I know there's been a lot of bad things, but we want to look at the good news, good news news, uh, on things. So what are some of the opportunities that this pandemic, if there are any, uh, have had on uh, the communications department or SID media or just uh, media in general? Thank you so much, uh, Tapiwa. As you rightly say that uh, the pandemic has brought in some miseries to a lot of families, uh, uh, people have lost their jobs, they lost their loved ones. Uh, but at the same time, if we look at the brighter side of it, you see, you realize that you now this COVID uh, pandemic also brought in opportunities, as you rightly say, to communicators and broadcasters. When the pandemic came, we didn't expect it that we we're going to be locked down for almost like three months, shut down. There was no communication at all. People were closed in their homes. That's when people realized the importance you know, of communication. But we thank God that, you know, because, you know, the church always works ahead. We've already put, you know, in measures and uh, things to evangelize. And um, media came as the appropriate tool for evangelism. And we were able to communicate, we were able to inform, entertain and educate our people as much as they were logged up. So, you know, the COVID-19 pandemic brought in a lot of opportunities for media evangelism. We're able to share the good news of our Lord Jesus Christ with all our unions, all our local churches, and the people were participating also, you know, learning how to use, you know, media as a tool of communication. And because we've already started this, you know, training with all our communicators, 
it was not very difficult for them to take advantage of the media to communicate to our people as much as they were locked down. So this COVID pandemic, I think it brought in a lot of opportunities for us to share the good news of our Lord Jesus Christ. And we are continuing, by the way, to use the radio, television, social media, WhatsApp, Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, and so forth to share the good news of our Lord Jesus Christ. Because we don't know how long this condom, this pandemic is going to last in, as you hear of new variants uh, across the globe. And, and, and one of those uh, ways, um, one of the initiatives that uh, we've been hearing a lot about was the I Will Go initiative that, you know, has kind of blossomed and ta taken a life of its own, if, if you will. Um, can you please uh, elaborate on, on that? Uh, thank you so much, uh, Tapiwa. This I Will Go initiative is our 2020 to 25 to 2025 strategic plan, which is taken from the book of Isaiah, um, chapter 6, verse 8. Actually, it happens to be one of my favorite now verses. If you check my email, you will see that from as far back as 2010. That's how I've been signing Isaiah 6, verse 8, where it says, uh, and I heard the voice of the Lord calling, Whom shall we send? Who will go for us? And then I said, Here yeah, I am, Lord, send me. So this I will go initiative. It's a personal initiative to all church members to take the bull by the horns, to say, I will go wherever you send me. So the whole idea is to propagate the message is to spread the good news of our Lord Jesus Christ. You know, because when it comes to evangelism, Tapiwa, there are no spectators. As I always tell my friends when I'm you know, doing some training to say, you know, when uh, the World Cup is playing, you find that, you know, there will be almost like, you know, 80,000 people in a stadium and only 25 will be active in the soccer player, in the soccer field. But when it comes to the issues of evangelism, there are no spectators. Everyone is a player. Hence the mission statement, I mean, hence our strategic plan, which says, I will go. So this is an invitation to all church members so that we can finish the work, you know, while we are still, you know, able to save the Lord. That's awesome, and I love I love the uh, example that you, you you gave about the spectators in the soccer field and only having you know twenty five or twenty two people on, on on the on the pitch at a time. Now, someone who is watching is a communicator and doesn't know how they can get involved within the match. You said everyone, I will go. It's a personal thing. So how would someone? Uh, one of the communicators within the church uh, doesn't have to be working at SID, but just a communicator within the Adventist church. How would they get involved? Thank you so much, uh, Tapiwa. That's a very, very uh, important question. You know, we are all not, you know, preachers. We are, we cannot all be pastors, but at least there's something that one we can do. We've got a lot of outreach programs that we do. We've got a lot of you no know, gadgets that we have. You know, like I always say, one, you know, pastor, you know, preaching some 35 years ago said, you know, those who own the means of communication who rule the world. Right now, you see that now we've got cell phones. If you look at your cell phone, Tapio, you realize that you've got a camera. You re right now, as we are doing this you know, uh, interview, I'm using my cell phone. So now you have a camera, you have a fax machine, you have a, a computer, you have got a radio, you've got everything. So if we can take advantage and use these gadgets as communicators, you know, sending daily you know, devotions to family, to friends, those who have not heard about Jesus Christ and so forth, this is your part that you can play as I will go. You can forward devotions. You can uh, forward a lot of Bible studies and so forth. You can actually conduct WhatsApp Bible studies with your friends, you know, using your gadget. So this I Will Go initiative is directed to individuals, you know, so that everyone becomes, you know, a participant in the work of the Lord. That That is, thank you very much for, for those uh, ideas. And, you know, I, I, I'm thinking about... The re-election that uh, happened when you were re-elected and you have probably had things that you were working on and you probably have other things that you uh, have planned as well for the communications department. Could you please uh, share with those who are watching what are some of those uh, plans that you have? 
Thank you so much, uh, Tapiwa. Yes, uh, the election came as a surprise. You know, we thank God for that. But before that, I'd also put some plans so that, you know, if I'm not re-elected, whoever comes after me must be able to take the baton and carry on with the mission of the church, you know. So as part of our strategic plan and uh, as communicators, what we've planned is to make sure that, you know, as we enter this quinquennium, our plan is to intensify, you know, this evangelism, you know, using electronic media as a tool of evangelism. What we've done in our SID territory, if I can speak about our SID uh, in our division, we have advisories that we carry out, you know, uh, with our union communicators and our media center, you know, personnel, so that at least, you know, we can equip and empower them on how to use, you know, media as a tool of evangelism. If you look at it right now, I'll tell you that, you know, a, a lot of unions, they have actually, you know, uh, taken this initiative and most of them, they've got, you know, television stations. I'll give an example of Malawi. We have Hope Channel Malawi, uh, we have Hope Channel Zambia, and now we have a new kid in the block, Hope Channel Zimbabwe, we have Hope Channel Namibia, we have Hope Channel Mozambique, and Novo Tombo Mozambique, and uh, let us, just three weeks ago, we have now what we call Hope Channel, you know, Indian Ocean in Madagascar. Besides that, we've got radio stations planted across Across our divisions and our communicators they continue to use this as a tool of evangelism and our strategic plan is also to enter what we call the 10 foot window these are unentered areas this is part of our strategic plan as communicators as you know this I will go initiative cannot just be taken um, Care by one person, but it's a collaboration between all departments, youth education, youth ministries, uh, personal ministries, Sabbath school, PAL, you name it, I'll spell it out for you. So it's a collaboration. So for us as uh, SID communication and uh, for us as communicators, uh, we are saying our plan and our vision is to continue to intensify, you know, using media as a tool of evangelism. I'm reminded by this scripture from Matthew 24, verse 14. When I was growing up to Pure, I used to hear that Jesus is coming again. You know, then I said, how soon can Jesus come with one pastor just preaching Sabbath in Sabbath out to all the converted? But when media came into play, I realized that, you know, when Matthew 24, 13 says, and this gospel of the kingdom shall be preached throughout the whole world, and then the end will come. Then I realized that we are, are on the right direction. And I want to thank the leadership of the church, you know, from the general conference to the GB level to the union and the conferences for supporting the use of media evangelism because without media, it would be difficult to spread the good news of our Lord Jesus Christ. But now we know that, you know, we can now bombard the airwaves and share as far afar afield as possible. So our strategy is to actually continue to use media and to continue to equip our unions, continue with intensive training because, you know, technology is changing almost every day. We want to keep abreast with the broadcasting technological trends so that at least, you know, we are not found wanting when it comes to using media as a tool of evangelism. And, and, uh, and I really like the fact that, you know, a lot of times people think about media, they just think TV and TV only, but you've, you've brought up uh, the use of uh, apps uh, and of uh, like the magazine that we, we, we talk about here, Echo Magazine and things like yes. that to help spread this message. Yeah, I was saying you hit it on the nail. We are not just talking about radio when you talk about media evangelism. We talk about radio, TV, social media, the apps, you know. Right now we've got so many different apps that we can use, you know. Right now we've just developed a game called the Heroes, you know, Bible Game Show. This is another way, you know, a simple way of sharing the good news of our Lord Jesus Christ and so forth. You know, everyone, you know, when it comes to quiz and games, you know, people want to see how clever or how stupid one is. And uh, by playing that game, <laughs> You find yourself already, you are now studying the Bible and so forth. So there's so many ways to kill a cat and so are they to spread the good news of our Lord Jesus Christ. Praise God, praise God for that. And it's so inspiring to see all the work that is going on despite the pandemic. Mr. Sibando, we won't take any more of your time. Thank you so much for joining us here on GNN. May you have a good rest of the day where you are. The pleasure is mine, Tapiwa. Thank you so much and your team for handling this you know, GNN. It's quite a very innovative way of you know, spreading the good news of our Lord Jesus Christ. As you all know, we have now gone digital. Praise God, praise God.
Ladies and gentlemen, Mr. Savanda. Well, there you have it. Thank you once again for joining us here at Good News News for this installation. Now, if you have any questions and want to get hold of us, you can do so by reaching us at echo at sid.adventist.org. Or if you want to see more stories, you can do so by visiting echo.sid.adventist.org. Until next time, I am Tapu. I'm supposed to be saying I am still stuck and don't have anything, but just you wait. Ooh, I'm going to have something for you. But until then, see you around. Don't judge my pants.